All right, this is fifth grade, unit two, lesson six. And in this lesson, uh, students are going to be exploring the relationship between multiplication and division. So we're gonna continue with contexts, but this time we're gonna start kind of moving into this idea that somehow multiplication and division are related in some way. And these contexts are gonna help us get uh, make sense of that relationship. So, you know, let's just get started here. And we're going to start with a 10 minute warm up. And in this warm up, uh, students are going to be asked to find the value of each expression mentally. And so, how might they? think about, oh, three times a half. So they, they might think of that as three copies of a half. So a half plus a half plus a half. And then you can add that together and you would get three halves. So that's one way that students can approach it. There's a lot of ways they might do it. Um, and, you know, we're going to milk this conversation because we have 10 minutes to talk about these four problems. All right. So now that we know that three times one half is three halves, what's three times two halves? So there's a couple of ways students might think about this. They they might say, well, if if multiplying three times one half gave us three halves, then three times two halves is going to give us six halves. That's one way to approach it. But other students might think of this as uh, they might recognize that um, that two halves is really one whole. So they might see it as one whole. And then three times one is equal to three. So that's another way students might think of it. And well, heck, if students know that three times one half is three halves, which by the way, three halves could be thought of as one and a half. Then three times two halves is three. Then what is three times three halves? Well, that's one half plus two halves. So they might add these two answers to get the answer for three times three halves. So they might say, oh, it's four halves, four and one half. That's because three halves is related to one half and two half. You just add one half and two halves together. That's how you get three halves. So you add these answers together and that's how you get four and a half. And now the question is, uh oh, what are we going to do to get five times three halves? A variety of ways we could approach this. But one way students might attack this is they might say, well, this means five copies of three halves. So one, two, three, four, five, and I'm gonna add all of this together and get 15 halves. So that's one way to do it, which by the way is seven and one half. But students might think uh, of some ways that they can approach uh, using these previous problems to help them get the answer to five and three halves. Beautiful number string on this number talk. Very beautiful problem string kind of set up. That, that was really kind of nice. All right, activity one, we're going to give 20 minutes for students to work on problem A, B, and C. And during this time, first you're going to give your students some sort of time to think independently, then students are going to work in pairs. And uh, and then as students are working on this, teachers, you're going to be thinking about how to document um, the ways that students are representing these problems with a diagram. You're going to be listening for the words students are going to be using. You're going to be listening for some sort of division references. You're, you're even going to be listening for multiplication references. All right, so let's begin with problem A. Uh, Lynn and Han ran a three mile relay race as a team. They each ran the same distance, draw a diagram. So what might students do? Well, students might, they might, well, first let's represent 
there we go, three miles. So I'm gonna draw three miles. So what is three miles gonna look like? Oh, let's say, boom, there's our, our three miles. And they each ran the same distance. So what we could do is we could just cut it straight down the middle. And since we cut that down the middle, that's, let's see, how much is this right here? Well, that's gonna be one mile right here plus a half a mile right here. So one person might run one and a half miles and the other person is gonna run one and a half miles. So that's one way students might approach this problem. And another way students might approach this is they might, okay, I'm gonna go back to drawing my three again. So let's get to three, so one, two, three. Another way students might approach this is they might cut each of these in half, and then they might say, okay, one, uh, Lynn runs half of that one, half of this one, and half of that one, in which case uh, Lynn is going to run, they, they each will run three halves, because that's a half, that's a half, that's a half, that's a half, <laughs> that's a half, and that's a half. So what does Lin, and then Han, Lin, then Han, Lin, then Han, and we can see that Lin runs three halves of a mile. So two different ways to think about it. One is we could think of it as each kid running one and a half miles, or we could think of it as each kid running three halves miles. So one and a half miles or three halves miles. They both are the same answer, just two different ways for students to think about how to approach that problem. We're gonna allow students that time to talk to each other and how did they draw their picture and how did they represent that situation. And then finally, we're gonna be listening for some sort of connection, which is uh, to the answers, which one and a half miles and three halves of a mile. Teachers, you're going to be documenting maybe on the whiteboard or something, just highlighting what students are doing as they're attacking this beautiful, beautiful problem. Activity two, uh, where do you see it? So students are going to choose one of these two pictures. So let's pretend uh, we're gonna look at just diagram A for now. All right, so we're gonna look at diagram A and in and then with diagram A in mind, and we're gonna kind of ignore diagram B for a moment, we're going to look at each of these expressions and we're gonna say, how does this diagram up here, uh, how do we see uh, how, how, how does this diagram represent each of these expressions, all right? For example, what does three times a half mean? Well, it means three copies of a half. So it could mean a half plus a half plus a half. So where do we see that in the picture? Oh, well, we see that uh, here's a half here's a half and here's a half and there is how we see in the diagram this idea of three times a half being represented now we've got three divided by two hmm how do we see in our picture three divided by two hmm. well we see that we've got three oh we could say these are leaders back from our previous lessons um, that we could think of this as three leaders, and each of those leaders are being cut into two pieces to be shared. And so that's how we are seeing three divided by two. And then the last one, one half times three. Now, how do we see one half times three? Well, you could think of that one half times three as one half three times. So that would be one half three times. And that's, boy, we already kind of did that problem right up here, didn't we? 
All right. And now, so that's all how we're thinking about this in relation to diagram A, but some students might choose instead to do think about these three things uh, as it relates to diagram B. We're going to give time <clears throat> for students to reflect, maybe write a letter to their future forgetful self, do some thinking on um, what did they learn in this lesson. And then the cool down, very brief. Lynn and Han ran a five mile relay race as a team. They each ran the same distance. Draw a diagram. All right, so we're going to start by drawing our five miles. And what does five miles look like? I don't know. One, two, three, four, five. That's a pretty good uh, estimation of five. I did a pretty good job of making them all equal. And then uh, they each ran the same distance. A couple of ways we could solve this. One is we could just chop it right down the middle, in which case we see two and a half over here, and we can see two and a half over here. That's one way. Another way we could do it, so how far did each student run? Two and a half miles. Another way we could do it is we could chop each of those in half. So each mile, well, let me just kind of shrink this down. And let's kind of put that over here. And let's do another one. And let's go. Whoa. All right. And then we're going to cut that into five pieces for five miles. So there's our five miles. And now in this one, we could just cut each of them in half. So let's do it. We're going to cut it each of these in half. And we could say that this is Lin, this is Han, this is Lin, this is, oopsies, Han. This is Lin, this is Han, this is Lin, this is Han, Lin, and Han. And so now we can easily see that Lin runs for five half miles. So five halves is how far Lin runs. And so we know that two and a half and five halves are the same amount. And our one problem connected to this lesson, depending on where you get it, it's either, I don't know, it's listed as problem one or maybe it's listed as some other one, but here it is. Han cuts a 15 foot piece of rope into four equal parts. Decide whether each expression represents the length of each part of the rope in feet. All right, so what does that mean? So what we're going to do is we are going to draw something that represents 15. Good enough. <laughs> and I need to cut that into 15. So, oh, I'm going to cut it into three pieces. And then I'm going to cut each of those into five pieces. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And so there's my 15 uh, foot uh, piece of rope. And now we're supposed to cut it into four equal parts. So, uh, Decide whether each expression represents the length. So does 15 divided by 4, does that represent the length of each part of the rope in feet? And in that case, yeah, darn right. 15 feet cut up into four parts. And that's exactly what that means. And so we could, if we wanted to, somehow, how would we do that? We could just kind of estimate and cut it up into four equal parts, one, two, three, four. But an e or not an easier way, a, a maybe a more accurate way? I don't know. We're going to cut them into four parts. Let's label them A, B, C, and D. So one way we could think of this is we could think of this as, uh, let's see, we could, could think of this as part A, B, C, D. There's our four equal parts. And we could do it again, A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. And then, uh-oh, 
we're down to these three oopsies yikes where did it go we're down to these three pieces but we can't cut it into four parts anymore or four we can't dole them out to person a person b per, or part a b c and d anymore so what we might do is we might go in and we might cut each of these into four pieces each of these into four pieces and then we say all right well here's part a b c d a b c d a b c d and now we can see how much does part a get one hole one hole one hole so that's three holes and then we can see there's a fourth there's a fourth and there's a fourth so part a is broken up into three and three fourths and that's feet and we can see the same thing part b or section b is the exact same three holes plus three fourths over there and so this definitely represents how much each part each part of the rope would be 15 times 4 4 times 15 no that's that's 40 50 60 that's 60 that's that's not representing how much each person or each part would be so that's no good and then look at this i accidentally did this question cuz i was identifying that 15 divided by 4 is also 15 fourths which can rep be represented as four fourths plus four fourths plus four fourths that's 12 plus just three more fourths so that is our three holes with three fourths left over so three and three fourths now folks that wraps up uh unit two <laughs> fifth grade unit two lesson six and you know what don't forget to subscribe